Order, 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 please. Order, please. Nominee, the acting chairman of the APC, the largest party in Africa. If you have anything that you want to tell us that we don't know, you are free to do so. And if you don't, please, you can take a bow and go. fact that I changed the landscape of Port Harcourt. It's on record. In four years, I constructed 12 flyovers in four years. Not by any contractor, but Jesus Bega, Nigeria Limited. One of you, Mr. President, will attest to the fact that you have even come to River State to commission projects Eminent Nigerians, in good, or it does not matter which affiliation, whether you're a politician, whether you're not a politician, whether you belong to party A or you belong to party B, all have come to River State to commission projects. And I can tell you, what is important, there's no thing like magic. What is important is what passion do you have? Um, my own question would be very simple, and it will have to do with your bio data. I just want clarifications around your bio data. Now, on the very first page, page one, you said um, you were born on the 2nd of December, 1980. Now, looking further down, um, you attended St. John's Primary School, Boko. Um, you just wrote 1989. I'm wondering whether you finished primary school at in 1989, which will suggest that you either started primary school at the age of three or two for you to finish in 1989. That's one. Two, you also claim that you... So, as you know, the screening started yesterday, and of the 14 nominees listed on the other, um, order paper for screening, seven were asked to take a bow and go, while four others were screened. The screening of at least three of the ministerial nominees was put on hold for various reasons, including, um, including uh, some falsification and forgery, amongst others. And according to the Vanguard, some of the nominees asked to take a bow and go are the immediate past governors of River State, um, Nisam Wike, Abubakar Momo um, of Edo State, Senator Abubakar Kiari, um, Senator John Eno, and the immediate past governor of Jigawa State, Abubakar Badaru. Um, there was also in Kiru Onye, Georgia, and the Nigerian ambassador um, to Germany since 2017, that's Ambassador Yusuf Maitama Tugga, all were asked to take a bow and go. The nominees whose screenings were put on hold and asked to clarify these issues were Professor Joseph Utsev, who hails from Buruku Local Government of Benue State, Senator Abubakar Sani Danladi um, of Taraba, and Bilo Mohammed of Sokoto State. The screening continued today, and the confirmation of the nominees will be done by the Senate upon the completion of the screening exercise. Now, some are of the opinion that the ministerial screening is a necessity, whilst others believe that it is simply a distraction. We really want to hear what your thoughts are, so please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818-038-4663. Um, tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow. Um, so, what do you think? Let's uh, jump right into the conversation around what were your first thoughts? We've already addressed what you, the what the list looked like and what our thoughts were in, in various other conversations. But between yesterday and today, what have your general thoughts been about the um, screening process? It felt like a sham. Oh wow. Okay. For me, I mean, because um, if you say that um, there is a screening process, you must at least observe due protocol. I mean, you must at least, it, it, it's really, well, maybe there's a, provi there's a constitutional provision for it, you know, in, in the sense that if you have served in a certain position and all that, but I'm not sure any or either of them have served as... Um, the, the the current in the current portfolio you know they may want to put them so why not screen because yes it, I, i'm not sure it should be about what you have done in the past 
it should be about testing your competencies for now. Yes, you have done X, Y, Z. You may have experience as, let's say, um, you may have experience in the education sector. You may have done so much work. But guess what? The president is maybe looking at putting you in, you know, to manage another portfolio that you have no experience with. You understand? And that's what the screening should be all about. It should be about disclosure where, you know, yes, you talk about your competencies, your expertise, your experience and all that. And all that information, the holistic information, should be what the Senate has, you know, in order to make informed decisions mm -hmm. as to whether, oh, okay, this person can go on to the next stage and then, you know, mm -hmm. take on this portfolio. So I think you raise a very valid question there because one of the first things that I asked was, what portfolios? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to screen me, I would um, compare screening uh, or this screening exercise to almost like a job interview, right? So if, um, in like our quote said today, are you the right crew to fly mm -hmm. um, Nigeria? Now, I need to assess you against something, yeah. right? Now, if I'm assessing you for a certain... So if you take... Um, occupations, right? You have professional occupations, so if you're a doctor, um, I have to know that I'm assessing a neurosurgeon for that position. I, I can't assess a general physician or a pediatrician sure. for that position. So not having the portfolios for me was the first concern, right? Because I just thought this then just becomes an exercise, which then raises the question, is it a necessity or is it a distraction? Sure. Is it just due process, right? Um, so we don't know the portfolios. We put that aside. Um, some people have taken a strong view to the whole concept of take a bow and go. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe I'll bring Noma in here. Um, Noma, we've had, I, I believe it was seven people seven, yeah. who um, went through that process of take a bow and go. Essentially, we know who you are. Um, we don't need to ask you too many questions. What were your thoughts around this? Um, thank you, Uti. <laughs> My concerns were around that. Uh, in fact, I had to take a note as to how many people were asked to take a bow. And I noticed that it had to do with the former governors, the um, House of Senate, those who had served in House of Representatives and all. So, and that also raised concerns for me as well. I like the uh, trajectory that um, Jola took in terms of portfolio. When you're talking about screening, let's even break it down. Screening process has to do with certain criteria that an individual is supposed to meet with. And I like the context in which you put it. For example, if you were going to be screened for a particular position, take, for example, like you said, a neurosurgeon, that means that somebody who is in general practice may not likely qualify, even though he is a doctor as well. So if you put it, uh, 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 juxtapose uh, pose it with ministerial screening, there are different capacities, different portfolios that these uh, nominees are supposed to occupy. And I saw that some people were asked questions in that regard. For example, if you were put in as um, the minister for, for women affairs, what are you going to do with regards to this and that? Questions were asked in that regard. But coming back to those who were asked to take a bow. It was as if, oh, these are already, we have already approved these ones, so there's no need to ask questions. But the truth of it is that, is there a criteria, is there a list of uh, qualifications that these people are supposed to have? Whether it's educational qualifications, which they ask some big questions with regard to their SSCE or their, you know, the disparity in their age and when they graduated, things like that. Then you come to, apart from the, the educational qualifications, you come to competence. You come to things like transparency, integrity. For example, the offices that you held, what were the things maybe they could have asked questions around the, the offices that were held before and how they intend to bring the experience in that uh, situation into the new role that they expected to play. 
things about suitability of the role. Do you think that you're qualified? You know, when you go for a job interview and they're asking you, this is the position that is available. How qualified are you? And you should be able to justify that. We didn't see things like that. Background check. Some of them were done. Some of them were already given pass mark because they feel that they had their records already. But there are some things that could have come up in, in line of duty over the years. Mm. Were there questions that could address those situations? For example, if um, your character, something where along the line as a House of Representative, you probably uh, uh, were out of character, you, you had misbehavior one way or the other. Does that still qualify because you were once uh, um, a, a, um, a representative, then you are qualified forever? Uh -huh. So these are things that raise serious concerns with regards the, uh, uh, what would I call it, the... the the manner in which this screening has taken place has not told us anything new. Yeah. Tests of character, value proposition. Only a few people were asked about their value proposition. Some were just assumed, okay, like the ones that were told take a bow. How was their, their, their performance, for example, in the different states? I know El Rufai, in the case of El Rufai, somebody raised the question after he was asked to take a bow, then someone raised the question about the insecurity situations while he was governor. So these, these, these are pertinent questions that I would have expected our Senate to be hands-on to ask because you are mindful about the people that are going to take responsibility for the state of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So, it, unfortunately, we have not seen that so far. And um, they continue to raise more questions, whether these are really the qualified uh, uh, people, these are people who are really qualified and are upstanding citizens that should be able to represent at the different ministry levels. Yeah. So, I mean, you do raise some points. I mean, I think that it would be good to state that. Um, of course, they've submitted that they were required to submit their documentation mm -hmm. before um, the screening process. I believe also that the security aspect of the screening um, had also been completed. So um, if we look at this, if we, if we say predominantly this is like a job interview, I think that the first concern there um, around um, the questions that they should have asked now, it's important to point out that take a bow and go is not a unique concept, right? It happens across other parliaments and other, other governments across the world. It's normal. And it, it's sort of like an efficiency type thing for me in my assessment that if I already know who you are and I know the work that you've done. So if you look at it as if you've been a member of the house, we already know you. You're familiar to us. You're not a stranger. So perhaps there are certain questions that you don't need to ask. The, the perspective for me was, but you are... This is an opportunity to talk to the nation, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, and if you look at the current context or the way we all are right now in Nigeria, there's a huge mistrust. There's, you know, a shadow hanging over. I think the tribunal is still yeah. sitting on, yeah. you know, even the, the status of the entire election itself. I think that at this point, right, any opportunity to speak to the people should be leveraged. So when you're asked, do you have a few words to say or do you just want to take a bow? I think to distinguish yourself, it's an opportunity at that point to really, you're not selling yourself to the people in the room. Mm. Let me put it that way. Mm. Yes, we know the people in the room have said take a bow and go. But to the Nigerian people who are watching, you have the ability to showcase yourself. You have the ability to say, you know what, this may be how you're feeling right now, but let me give you some comfort that if I am in the role today, this is who I am. And I think that that opportunity was lost because for you mm -hmm. to come in and just say, oh, take a bow and go, we understand the why, but it's a very, very big opportunity that was lost to address the people who are really hurting at this point in time, who you, you, you know, are unable to connect with you. So many people that I've spoken to in recent, recent times are almost in a, we're all in a so slightly dissociative state. Yeah. Like, we're just existing, we're just going through the motions, you know, with everything that we are being hit from all sides. So this was really a time to showcase. So that I think that that was a lost opportunity. And when you then sort of ask yourself, 
why is this process then necessary? That mm -hmm. question becomes really, really valid because mm -hmm. if you're just rubber stamping for yourselves that, okay, we know these people is fine, we don't need to ask too many questions, that's another, another challenge. But when we start to talk about the distraction part of the question, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to throw this because we've already had three people who we saw the clip there that was talking about your age and when you left primary school. Mm -hmm. And every time this thing comes up, I'm just like, why? Why do we constantly, if we stick to the analogy of interviewing, right? What happens? You are interviewing somebody. The further away you are from graduating, the less I care about what you did at university. Yeah. I want to know about the experience that you've had. Now, that being said, the, the guidelines of, uh, I think it's first school leaving certificate, is very clear. Yeah. Right? Provide it and let's move on. Well, we find ourselves constantly coming back to um, issues of qualification, certification. Is it genuine? Did it, was it forged? What are your thoughts there when you saw this again? Okay, so let me take a little bit. Let, let me take us back a little bit from what you said um, about um, the opportunity lost, you know, in terms of um, they could have sold themselves to the general, to the nation, you know. So for me, I think there is a bit of a disconnect from the Red House in terms of the fact that I think that they have forgotten that they are representatives of the people. Hmm. They are first and foremost, because all of us cannot be there, you know. So the, the, the Senate, they are like our spokespeople, you know, who should be the one doing all the rigorous, you know, interviews and rigorous questioning and ensuring that only the best hands, you know, the most qualified people are at that position. But again, I mean, it, it was lost. Mm. Then it comes back to the question of, you see, if you're not very interested mm. in how this country moves forward or in putting the right person in the right role, you really would not have the right questions to ask. You cannot give what you don't have. Mm. It's as simple as that. If I know that I am concerned about how my, the people in my constituency would enjoy better power or this power issue would be resolved, I would be more interested in ensuring the competency of whoever is going to sit in mm. that. You, mm. you understand? So again, that drives the kind of questions, the kind of, um, um, the kind of disposition they're going to have mm. towards these nominees. Yeah. Okay, let's take a quick break. Um, please stay with us. We'll be right back. So if you're just tuned in, it's our Ladies Night Out and we're discussing the ministerial screening process. We're asking, is it a distraction or a necessity? Um, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818-038-4663. Um, send us a message on X at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. And um, we're also opening our phone line. So our phone line is now open. So you can call us on 07 Zero two five double zero seven seven four nine. I'll take that again. Zero seven zero two five zero zero seven seven four nine. Please remember when you call to turn down the volume of your television set so that we can hear you and your thoughts. So, Noma, I'll come to you. Um, this process, right? The people. Do you have a sense today, given what you know historically about some of these candidates, and also? what we've seen over the last two days, do you have enough information or do you think rather that um, they've given us enough comfort as the Nigerian people that these people have been effectively screened? Um, Uti, the feeling, and I don't know, uh, maybe I might be speaking on behalf of Nigerians or myself, but just listening and uh, reading up on um, the proceedings have just told me one thing, that we have done our, we have ticked off the box. Basically, that's the impression that I have. Because like I said earlier, the Senate represents the people. And really, like Adola had um, added, that 
if they were really passionate about bringing change, about bringing hope, and about bringing the necessary uh, transformation for the citizens of Nigeria, then it would not just be a case of take a bow. Yes, you might say these are your colleagues, these are people that we've worked with, but we continue to mention, I remember the the previous, um, uh, the, the when we first talked about the ministers and when the list was um, released, we had mentioned about square pegs in square holes, being able to feed people. And this would have been a beautiful opportunity, like you had said, for people to showcase their competency, their ability to stand in a role and to function optimally in that role. I like um, the case of, I think, Mrs. Um, Edu, you, you know, who was talking about the healthcare sector. She had made mention about different things, about the government not taking advantage of the pandemic season to upgrade the health care sector in the country. She talked about uh, being able to raise pay grade for, for doctors and their welfare, things like that. She talked about national health care um, insurance and things like that. So already you see that this person is positioning themselves for a ministerial appointment with regards to health. We were looking for other, I mean, some of them, I just saw them, they just said, oh, thank you for the opportunity. You know, um, my competence has shown for it and I will be glad that uh, if I'll be confirmed and all of that. There was nothing convincing that this person has passion for a certain area within the government or within the ministries, and they want to bring light, they want to bring hope, they want to bring transformation in that regard. This was something that we were looking to experience with Nigerians watching the plenary session and looking at these supposed uh, representatives in regards to the ministries and coming up, and it looks like <laughs> if I'll borrow Dollar's language, a charade, just, oh, okay, is our people, is our person, is our person. So it just felt like this was something just to, to tick off the box that, oh, we have done something. With regards to ministerial screening, we have done screening. Again, we do not know if there was some form of criteria or list or some a guideline, so to speak, when it comes to ministerial a screening that they were using. It could have been at the top of their head. It could have been something that was not really planned for, and therefore the implementation was just lopsided. So uh, it just continues to buttress the fact that Nigerians, given other opportunities with future elections, we have to be more conscious of the people that we put in positions and to represent us as a people because the more we put in the wrong kind of people the more the re misrepresentation will continue to take place and from this screening we've seen so far that this has not helped the nigerian citizens to understand clearly how these people who have been appointed or nominated are going to make any difference from what is already existing in the Nigerian government. And, and that's the thing for me, right? So if you're going to share a process with us, if you're going to give us access, so if it was a closed door yeah. um, activity, right, where we had no insight into it and you were going to come out and tell us they've been successfully screened and here's, you know, the next step, then I think it would have been fine to see what happened. But given that you've invited us in, you've given us the opportunity to see it, then it's an, also an opportunity for you to be able to communicate to us that this process is not just a um, checklist, but it's actually or a tick box activity. It's an activity that is really taken seriously. So even as it stands now, right, we've gone through 
this process. I know we're still expecting more names, yeah. right? Um, and interestingly enough, I think I was reading something today where um, we're also supposed to be expecting new ministries. I think we have a caller. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Let's hear what you have to yeah. say. Yeah, this is Pastor Lanzo. I'm calling from Thank you for calling. Let's you hear know, what you have to say. My take on this uh, ministerial training process is just a distraction. You know what I said is a disaster. How can somebody that comes for screening, the word screening means that the person needs to be thoroughly, thoroughly Except. proved, thoroughly drilled, so that they will get the best from the person. But a situation where somebody is coming to tell us that he passed common entrance at the age of three years, that is in, in, in sort of accessibility. A serious in sort of accessibility. Uh, can you imagine? These are the people who want to hand over Nigeria. Mm. See, for me, Katarapo is just a charade. Because it, when we, they disciple themselves, what are they coming to do? Come and take a bow and do. And somebody is coming, not even telling us. So watching everything, they didn't really attach portfolio. So that they can even screen them on the portfolio they are, they are going to give to them. May God save this nation. Thank you very much, um, Pastor Ladipo. Thank you for calling. So again, I mean, that just goes to echo, right? So that... It's, an, it's a lost opportunity. Mm -hmm. it's, it's either you do it in a way where we all um, are carried along yeah. or we don't know and we know that we've okay. moved on. Exactly. exactly. So if you come back, so we were having a, a conversation just before um, the show started, Norma. We're talking around um, the argument of not needing the portfolios, right, to vet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as it stands today, I think there are two parts of the Constitution in that section uh, 147. One speaks to the fact that if their area of responsibility is not um, stated, that um, it, the entire house can sit. So I think we have another call. I think this is Lawman from Abia. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, my dear sister. Good evening, Lawman. Thank you for calling. Yes, sir. Lawman. Let, let me just tell you. See. That screening to me, to me as a Nigerian, is a distraction. Remember, we had a screening during the Ari regime, and the Minister for Education was screened. Who later told us he know nothing about education. So, this one they, they, they are doing now is so diverting us from the small subsidy of President said he removed by suffering us. Impoverishing us. So everything they are doing there, I don't think this the present cup of names that has been nominated or street will make anything better unless they will tell truth to power by letting him know of that Nigerians are suffering. Let us reverse the poor form prize and make sure that our refineries are working, the modular refineries are working. And stop letting us know that people in the Niger Delta are operating illegal refineries when you are unable to build your own refineries. So if they are able to tell the president this, I will do my myself for them and say they are serious for business. For now, for now, they are not serious for any business. It's just a distraction. But we are serious. Tomorrow, we will come out on the street and tell them, so far they are gone. Go no more for that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lawman. Um, and I mean, I, the sentiment is not, uh, is not uncommon. If you speak to anybody over the last two days, that is the same feedback that we're getting same. consistently. Nobody's connecting with the process. It just seems like, yes, we're doing it, we've done it, um, and that's what it is. So I think that it, it just goes to show that everybody now is seeing this um, for what it is uh, in terms of... of um, the fact that the process is not, I want to say the process is not inclusive. I mean, it's not designed to be inclusive because they're being screened by the house. They're not essentially being screened by the people of Nigeria. Mm. But it's just the opportunity where you've, you've given us the opportunity to see what's happening. 
then we also have some expectations and whether we are meeting those expectations or not. Mm. Um, so Nama, I'll come to you just for your, your final thoughts around this process. What I are you have some hoping messages. for um, in your, as, as we go through this process, what are you expecting to see next? What are you hoping to come through next? Okay, before I answer that, let me just quickly read a message from, from one of our viewers. He says, Excuse me, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying, hashtag ways. The ministerial screening process, distraction or necessity. To me, the screening process is not a distraction, but a necessity. The screening process is a way of testing someone's capabilities. My dear... Beautiful sister Diola made mention of two things. She said that when there is a screening process, there's need to follow due process and test the competence of the person. My dear beautiful sister Norma asked about the criteria of occupying an office, whether it be through education or performance. I'm in full support of these screenings because you do not put people or put someone in office without discussing their capabilities. Every office is sensitive. Those that took a bow and left, maybe they were not qualified and capable. Nice anchoring of the show, Sister Uti. My name is Daniel Ilo, Way's regular fan. Mm -hmm. So just, um, um, Uti, it, this is day two already. And um, <laughs> it's 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 almost, um, almost lost hope because um, it almost feels sometimes that we continue to empower people that are not qualified to make a difference for us. Because if these things are things that we study, I mean, even going for uh, um, uh, an interview for a job or position, sometimes you go back, you read up on the position, you read up on the expectations, you, you read uh, online, you Google, you get um, information that empowers you or informs you before you step into the limelight to project whatever it is that you are uh, mm. proposing, yeah. right? So it almost feels like we we just continue to do things. It's almost as um, the uh, yeah. the Senate what well, senator said. It's not going to be business as usual for so us to be can, able. We to, can simply say uh, that it's just business as usual. Yeah. yeah. But it, it has proved to be business as yeah. usual because if they really did their due diligence, then there are pertinent questions mm. that would have accompanied this uh, ministerial screening, screening. process. Yeah. But we haven't seen that around. We I don't know if it's um, going to come up in the f in the future when yeah. the other nominees are released. We yeah. So know, I mean, I think that's a good note to end this on. Um, for us in saying that, of course, we've seen what these first two days come, um, have gone, the way they've gone, and we want to hope that when the next set of nominees are announced, that there's a bit more rigor to the process. But um, it's been a great conversation. Thank you, Noma. Thank you, Adiola. Um, and before you go, or before we go, please ensure that you follow us on Instagram at Wayshow Africa. Um, interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. Remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch and follow us. If you missed today's quote, here it is again. This time, screening will be very thorough. It's not going to be a situation where the screening will be any how. We are going to know the background of the nominees, and we are not going to disappoint Nigerians. It is not going to be a shallow screening. You must have the character. You must have the face. You must have the behavior to be among the cabin crew to fly Nigeria. This time around, Nigeria is going to be better. On that note, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Have a good evening. <laughs>